Question number one. And I'm reading it. I'm going to try to read them exactly the way they were written. Before hearing, believing, and obeying God's word, can a person marry, divorce for reasons other than adultery, and remarry, be a part of God's church, while remaining married to the second wife, who also believes and is baptized? The question here, I think I understand it. The question says, if a person is divorced without adultery, not for fornication, remarries, and then learns the gospel and comes to Christ and is baptized into Christ, along with their second spouse, can those two spouses serve Christ and be a part of the local congregation and remain married? I think I think I stated that question. I, re, I think I restated that question correctly. I do not want to pretend that this is an easy question. I do not certainly want to pretend that I take this question lightly, because I have sat down and studied with non-Christians who are staring this issue directly in the face, and it caused me sleeplessness of what I was going to say how I was going to deal with it. And there are a lot of Bible teachers, there are a lot of preachers in churches of Christ who will deal with it differently than I will and who will have a different opinion. I have not asked the elders what they think about this. I have not asked for their permission for what I'm about to say. Uh, I'm just going to tell you the way I read the Bible. And it's really tough. It's really, really tough. Matthew chapter 5, verse 33. I mean verse uh, 31. It was said, whoever sends his wife away, let him give her a certificate of divorce. But I say to you that everyone who divorces his wife, except for the reason of unchastity, makes her commit adultery. And whoever marries a divorced woman commits adultery. Come forward to Matthew chapter 19. Verse 9. Jesus says, I say to you, Whoever divorces his wife, except for immorality, and marries another woman, commits adultery. Come forward to Mark chapter 10. Verse 11. Mark, Mark chapter 10, verse 11. And he said to them, Whoever divorces his wife and marries another woman, commits adultery against her. And if she herself divorces her husband and marries another man, she is committing adultery. There's another passage in Luke that says exactly the same thing. Matthew twice, Mark, and Luke all record Jesus' words here. And what Jesus says, and apparently he said it more than once, what Jesus says is the only exception that allows a person to divorce a spouse and marry a new spouse while the first spouse is still alive is adultery. He says if you divorce a spouse and marry a new spouse without adultery, the new marriage is adultery. That's what he says. So the question asks, what does baptism do? What does coming to Christ after the divorce and remarriage do? And here's my thought. Baptism does not redefine sin. What is sinful before baptism is sinful after baptism. Amen. 
And if it's adultery before baptism, it's adultery after baptism. If it's adultery after baptism, and it occurs before baptism, the baptism does not change what it was already. There is simply no exception written in Scripture that says once you get baptized, there's now a new exception to what was formerly a sin. It, it's just not there. It's not just that divorce and remarriage is a sin without adultery. Because that's the way there's this, there's this idea that you look at it, well, that old, that first marriage and divorce are wiped away. It's washed away in baptism. But the sin that Jesus names is adultery, and the adultery occurs in the new marriage. Go with me to Romans chapter 7. Romans chapter 7, verse 2, says, For the married woman is bound by law to her husband while he is living. But if her husband dies, she is released from the law concerning the husband. So then, if while her husband is living, she is joined to another man, she shall be called an adulteress. But if her husband dies, she is free from the law. So that she is not an adulteress, though she is joined to another man. The reason that Jesus calls it adultery is because the law says when God joins you together, you don't have a right to break it. And so if you break it and you go and join another man, you're still breaking this law. You're violating this covenant that you entered into the first time. And baptism does not provide you with an excuse for violating this covenant. And this is extremely hard. I studied with a couple one time that they, where the woman had been divorced twice. The man, his first marriage. And in this, her third marriage, at least one of which had no adultery, at least on her husband's part. They had two young girls. Two-year-old and five-year-old. By this marriage. You have to ask yourself, can I break up this marriage? It's not up to me to decide when God's word applies. It's not up to me to decide when God's word makes sense and when the repercussions for following God's word are too painful and the cost too high. It's not my role. It's my role to try to understand the word of God. Sometimes I fall short. But I think that's what it says. I think that's what it says. 